Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Health Ignited with Dr. Nick and Sonia Jensen. Uh, we're so grateful that you're here tuning into this information. We find that when we apply this stuff, it's life changing for ourselves and our, for our patients. And uh, this week, we're going to dive into a little bit uh, regarding stress and changes in our, in our circadian rhythms and how that affects our immune system and so many more details like this. So if you're enjoying this kind of content and it's adding value to your life, again, please stay tuned continue to subscribe and, and like the content. And it's always helpful when you share your questions and comments. So we'd love to read them and respond in these podcasts. So uh, we just came back from a trip recently mm -hmm. and I always find it interesting when you go on a trip, we still try to apply so much of our lifestyle principles while we're away. And yet there's certain things that, that throw you know a wrench into the situation where we're staying up later, the food is a little bit different than we're used to, there's new stressors because the bed's a little different than what we're used to. And uh, this one was a driving vacation, so it didn't involve, um, you know, major time changes and, you know, the, the stress of, you know, planes and things like that. Um, but what are some things that you think about uh, with regards to stress mm -hmm. while away? How do you maintain the strength of your immune system despite being away? Uh, what are some things you think about? Yeah, so we try to think about what is it that we can control and what we can't. So, for example, when we're staying in hotels, there's lights everywhere and sometimes we can't manage um, how much light is coming in because that's going to influence our circadian rhythm like it was in that first place that we were staying. Food sometimes we can't control, but often we get Airbnb so that we can control our food. So we go grocery shopping and we're still trying to eat how we normally do at home. But I think the biggest one in our this trip would have been the first place we stayed first Airbnb and walking in and it was really palpable that there was mold mm -hmm. there in the environment and we had to kind of sleep in the basement which is probably even worse so that I find really challenging because when you do detox when you do become more sensitive you pick up on these things in your environment very quickly and um, then we just have to make sure we're doing all the other things so that immune system stays steady and strong to manage that extra load. Yeah, because it's so common when people go away, we call it like the vacation effect. Yeah. That people go away, they're like more relaxed, there's different stressors going on, and they get sick. Yeah. You know, and you brought up some really important things that maybe not everyone's paying attention to when they go away. Uh, and we also want to dive in this conversation just because tis a season, like our immune systems are going to be adapting to change in temperature, change mm -hmm. in, you know, environments, change in stressors with kids going back to school. There's a whole lot of, you know, you know, aspects to the stress response or these, these new exposures when traveling that are going to potentially stress your immune system, right? Yeah. So you and brought the up... Well, the travel piece too, I think there's also that element where your nervous system all of a sudden relaxes. Yeah. And so when we're at home and we're busy and we're constantly doing, our cortisol is probably high and our adrenals are working overtime to just help us manage our schedule. And all of a sudden we have a different schedule, the nervous system knows we can relax and cortisol isn't covering the immune system anymore. So then yeah. all of a sudden it becomes active and we get sick because yeah. of that. Yeah. And then sometimes when we're away on vacation, uh, there's more ice cream. Right, especially <laughs> in this household, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like a daily thing that ends up happening with our kids, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so when we go away, Soren, our, our youngest, he likes to sample the different flavors of the area. Yes. Right, yeah. and so we actually visited uh, like the Tillamook uh, ice cream cheese dairy factory. Right. And so it was like this overwhelm overwhelm of, of his nervous <laughs> of system <dairy. laughs> of, and learning how it was all processed it was a really cool museum kind of place but yeah. uh, anyways uh foods that aren't typically in the diet are also part of that reality when mm. you're when you're away uh in in different places and sampling you know it we like to balance things out you know we're, we're not aiming for perfection what we're trying to do is really create a robust system so that when we can dip our toe into these different experiences and not get totally thrown off. Mm -hmm. uh, and then listen to the body, because if the body is expressing, you know, extra fatigue, maybe getting a little more mucusy, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you didn't sleep as well, you know, there's some signs to like pause and, and shift gears. And you can do these things even while away. Mm -hmm. You know, you can might implement a slightly longer fasting routine. Taking you know. your supplements with you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that, that we can do. Uh, to, to strengthen our immune system despite being away in different environments. Um, but this is so important because, you know, this, this next big like change in weather mm -hmm. is another stressor. So I, I just kind of wanted to 
like invite you guys into the way that we look at the immune system a little bit. We're not going to get too deep into the science, but sort of dip our toe into this understanding of how we can support our immune system. And we're always thinking about it indirectly through our sleep, through our food, through our fasting, through, through our, our movement, hormones. through our hormones. Yeah. We're always thinking about like, how do we, you know, not just how do we not get sick, but how do we feel our best? And feeling our best often involves not being sick. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of change that's coming up for many families and in that change stress will go up and just like we just had a change of coming home from a vacation, anytime I think there's transition there's this element of stress and overwhelm and if we're not putting into place all the little things that help us stay grounded, it's easier for the body to step into that space of like not feeling good. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So, um, you know, we mentioned some of our strategies for what we do while we're away. Um, obviously, a lot of that stuff is what we manage at home, mm -hmm. you know, on, on the regular. Um, and then, you know, given that there is, you know, change in the season, we just might dial in our practices a little bit more specifically, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there's some interesting dynamics in that men respond or have a different, you know, immune response than women do. And so I thought we could kind of share some of that because it's, it's super interesting to think that our hormones play such a significant role yeah. on how our immune system operates, right? Yeah. Something that might be um, very obvious for women as they're moving through like their monthly cycle, if, they're still, if they still have one, is that right before the period, about a few days, there's this element of fatigue that shows up and you almost feel kind of fluish mm -hmm. in those couple of days. And that's usually a sign that your hormones are dipping more than they actually should right before. But that is a reality of a lot of women. So then there is this relationship of like knowing that, oh, when my hormones are off, my immune system is also impacted. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and so uh, some other interesting facts with regards to women, women are more prone to autoimmunity. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems, uh, seem from, the, from the research, it seems to be the case that, you know, we have these two different aspects to our immune system, Th1, Th2, which are T cell uh, helper cells, one and, and two. And when, or when women have, or because women have higher levels of estrogen, they, they're more TH2 dominant, which helps them fight off infections and things like this. So I don't know if, if you at home, if you're, you've got a partner and you find that like, as a man, maybe you're getting sick more often, your wife might be like, oh, he's got the, the man flu. <laughs> oh, he's got the, the man, man cold. flu, <laughs> the man cold again. I'm doing fine. I, you know, I still have to go to work, do all yeah. the things and take care of the kids, you know, all the things that women are expected to do in this you know, modern world. Mm -hmm. And yet you're technically, you've got more robust capacity to deal with yeah. you know, infections and things like yeah. that. And that's the challenge when women step into perimenopause, like yeah. estrogen is starting to fall. So your armor is starting to dissolve a little bit. And now all of a sudden you're noticing like, oh, like I, I don't have the resilience that I used to have. I can't stay up late. Like I used to be able to yeah. be okay. Or I can't, I cannot do the things that help my immune system and my hormonal system because my body will instantly tell me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So considering women have a stronger response to like say the seasonal cold or flu in general, right? Um, when it gets overreactive, uh, when estrogen drops, that sets you up for a hyper response to a lot of things in the yeah. body, which turn into autoimmunity. It could be thyroid, mm -hmm. there could be other things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so lupus is a big one that you kind of see more in women than you right. do in men. Yeah. And even Hashimoto's is one that we see often now, even in yeah. younger women. So there's so many different elements to autoimmunity, but this hormonal piece, I think, isn't like looked at enough to recognize that there's this protective layer that we have. And when that gets manipulated, whether it's because of birth control or toxicity or just general emotional stress, that is going to impact your ability to ward off these um, imbalances that happen in the immune system so the immune system starts to attack itself. Yeah, exactly. So I, I wanted to, I thought it was interesting to just share that little detail that women and men yeah. operate a little bit differently. And then, you know, the other thing we've said that we wanted to do is just share a little bit of our understanding of, 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 our, of the immune response because I think it's important. So obviously there's a hormonal component which is significant. Yeah. Um, but one way to look at the immune system is it's outside in mm -hmm. that, that there's invaders in the, in the environment that are impacting our immune system and they're causing all the symptoms. Like that's like a sort of a, a myth or maybe one version of understanding things because that could be virus, it could be bacteria, it could be parasite, it could be fungus or mold. We mentioned, so like the moldy yeah. environment. Um, and so it's sort of an outside in philosophy. 
And, you know, germ theory, call it whatever you want. Another way to look at things is that there's, there's an aspect to your terrain or your, your, just the strength of your endogenous immune system, your, your innate immune system, your adaptive immune system, in that you're releasing B cells, T cells, antibodies, and things like that to attach to any sort of foreign influence. Uh, and that could be like high amounts of stress. It could be you know, poor sleep. It could be all sorts of things. And so our body's responding internally to deal with uh, the environment. So the way we look at it, both things are happening. Mm -hmm. There's external factors, there's internal factors. Uh, but what I find is interesting is a lot of us will look at the surroundings and go, you know, uh, I know a family, they all got sick. I know another family, they all got sick. And so we look at things uh, superficially that's outside in attack, right? Mm -hmm. And I think like hopefully part of this conversation is that Look, there's differences between men and women. Right. You know, our hormones are dictating so much of our ability to get sick or not. Right. right. And obviously there's components to our digestive system and so many other things. But I thought we'd just sort of talk a little bit about that sort of outside in, inside out kind of aspect to the immune system. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, you know, other things that, that we would consider as, you know, sort of immunological support would be looking at you know, how oft, what's our, how is our insulin doing? How, how, how much is it getting upregulated as a result of our food frequency or activity? Like when we get more sedentary, we're not getting these, you know, stimulatory aspects to our immune system that help us clear stuff out, whether it be lactic acid or, you know, clear out the glucose that's building up in our blood as a result of us consuming food. Yeah. Um, but what are some other things that you might think of like sort of inside uh, building internal strength Mm -hmm. to deal with environmental influences. Yeah, so it's always looking at our vitality, like our vital force, um, to see like what's going to influence it in a positive way and what's going to take away from it. So our daily habits, like how we're waking up, what we're doing um, throughout the day, what's going to strengthen our vitality. So when we are around that family that's sick or you know, the kids going back to school, they are bombarded with different elements. Um, but a lot of it does have to do with the change in our routine and our capacity to adapt to stress. So I think just really looking at the adrenal glands and looking at stress is probably one of the most important things and to understand that relationship so we can continue to support it so that we do have more of that vital force. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could maybe speak to a vital force a little bit. So I love that sort of correlation between our st stress hormones and our vitality, our ability to adapt to life's many different stressors. And really those two hormones are like are cortisol, DHEA, yeah. if we were to just simplify. I yeah. mean, obviously there's other ones like epinephrine, norepinephrine, and, and then there's neurotransmitters and things like that. But if we just looked at that vital force through the lens of the hormonal system being cortisol and DHEA, mm -hmm. and like how do those two interact? Yeah, so they both have an inverse relationship. As cortisol goes up when we're under stress, DHEA naturally will go down. And DHEA is the one that converts into estrogen and testosterone. So then it naturally declines our sex hormones. Again, that armor that we had against our immune system, it's going to suppress that so that cortisol can do its job and manage the stress in the body. Um, over time, though, if we are stepping into adrenal fatigue, then cortisol is also low and DHEA is also low. So then that's creating like a whole other... Um, in inefficient, I guess, mm -hmm. vital force or inability to actually manage the outside world because now we're stepping into burnout. So if we can understand, like, how do we support our DHEA so that we can then navigate those ups and downs because that's a natural response that the body has, it's when we get stuck in that that creates issues. Mm -hmm, definitely. So, I mean, I think it's interesting to consider that when, when we're, you know, looking at from an inside-out kind of reality, we don't often look at our adrenal glands as an aspect to our immune system, mm -hmm. but I think it's so important. And hopefully, you know, if you're tuning into this, like it, it starts to make sense that when you're more stressed, when you're losing your ability to adapt to life's many different stressors, like we brought up the mold for some yeah. people going into a new house with mold, it, it knocks them out. Right. Their immune system goes into complete like overwhelm, yeah. right? And we call it environmental sensitivity. <clears throat> But this is happening to probably people that you know. Maybe it's happened to you before. You know, uh, some people get headaches. Yeah. Right? That's, that's like a hyperimmune response based on the environment causing this massive stress. Mm -hmm. And so when we get really low in our DHEA, our ability to bounce back from, you know, life stressors 
gets affected, mm -hmm. right? So that's, mm -hmm. I mean, that's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I know you have like an acronym or something that you use to describe what DHEA actually does in the body. Yeah. I think it's like the four M's. The four M's. So yeah. mind, mood, memory, and metabolism. Mm -hmm. um, your immune system's in there too. Yeah. So <laughs> well, two... all of that will influence your immune system. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So mind, mood, memory, metabolism, I mean, we know our, there's a lot of research that shows like as we age, DHEA declines, just mm -hmm. like, you know, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, some of these other hormones. Um, but there's, there's a high correlation, again, not causation, but high correlation with low DHEA and Alzheimer's dementia. Mm -hmm. uh, we, and really, like, look at DHEA, consider, like, the my, resiliency in the mind. Yeah. It's really helping with memory, with that robustness and your ability to feel vital, feel strong. Um, it's an androgenic precursor as well as estrogen, so it can be great for helping to build muscle and have a desire for uh, activity. Motivation. Motivation, mm -hmm. those kind of things. And um, for pain. I remember a while ago having a patient that had fibromyalgia, yeah. and DHEA was the thing that really shifted his like pain that was yeah. in his body. Yeah, it's huge. So, I mean, just your ability to recover from mm -hmm. something. So if you take that sort of like the many different things that DHEA does and then, you know, apply that into someone who's got, you know, chronic burnout, feeling stressed, maybe they're in their sort of 35 to 45 plus year old range where there's a natural s slope and decline to DHEA. Um, they feel like they're getting sick often. Maybe yeah. there's, you know, triggers with food and they go into new environments and it really rattles them. If someone around them gets sick, they're more likely to get sick. I mean, these are all signs that the DHEA is really burnt out. Mm -hmm. um, as an aside, I find it's really fascinating when people um, start to change their lifestyle habits, exercise more, eat the right foods, fast a little bit more, you know, create that metabolic flexibility, start lifting some weights. DHEA naturally comes back. Yeah, because it's so adaptive. Yeah. Because um, I noticed that too with patients. Um, before I used to give a lot of women DHEA, and yeah. now what I've started to do is not go there right away, yeah. but change the lifestyle, do some of the other hormones, and just support it, support the adrenals, and teach them how to do it naturally throughout their habits. It does shift very quickly. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's important for people to know because I th we get so stuck in thinking this is who we are. You know, I'm someone who goes into an environment and I'm constantly worried, whether it be with the Wi-Fi, the, the mold, mm -hmm. the, you know, the cigarette smoke, maybe. Because that creates even more stress. Oh, totally. Like we had this conversation with a friend of ours during um, our week last week and she was asking me like, well, how do you navigate these things? It's like, mm -hmm. how strict are you when you're away? And I'm like, you know, watching the kids, I don't want to create anxiety around their environment. Yeah. I want them to be aware that okay there's mold in this house so what am i going to do to help support my body okay there's foods you know we're in a small town that doesn't have organic foods and things like that am i going to fast for seven days or mm -hmm. am i going to allow my body to like adapt to some of the pesticides and things it's going to be exposed to because i've been doing the work up until that time yeah so i think worrying about all those things creates more stress which will then raise your adrenaline your cortisol and it's going to impact your vitality anyways yeah and it's so interesting so, i mean and then you could take someone who's already massively depleted yeah and and they they if they're not hyper vigilant it can really you know put them into a tailspin yeah right? so i think just knowing where you are at yeah. yeah so i just i don't know if you noticed last week i kept saying when in rome yeah <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's the reality. I mean, you go any restaurant you go to, it's unlikely mm -hmm. they're using olive oil. Mm -hmm. and you're getting unhealthy fats very commonly. Again, this is why we typically, when we're traveling, we're looking for places that we have our own kitchen. Yeah. So we can dictate, obviously, what oils and things like that get in. Uh, and then, you know, most of the Airbnbs, they're using nonstick pans. Like, there's other... Yeah. There's other things. Factors. Are, yeah. like, it's mm -hmm. not about perfection. I mm -hmm. think that's what's important. But I also think this is why it's so helpful to know your hormonal system. Yeah. You know, because, you know, if you're running a Dutch test, a dry urine hormone test, you get a really, really clear picture at how uh, adrenally adapted you are. Yeah. What's your cortisol DHEA ratio? Mm -hmm. You know, if you know that about yourself, you might be, take extra supplements for you to support your adrenal system. Yeah. Right. And looking at like how DHEA is converting to estrogen or testosterone. So again, yeah. going back to that armor that estrogen gives us for our immune system, knowing, okay, am I actually converting into testosterone or is it going into estrogen so that we can support that conversion too? Yeah, exactly. Um, so one last little piece of this uh, sort of discussion that, that's really tied together that I wanted to make sure we bring up is just that circadian rhythm, yeah. right? So if we look at, 
you know, uh, this natural, again, if you go to the, the Dutch test, this natural cortisol wake response, we're supposed to get a hit of cortisol when we wake up in the morning. Typically when you're on vacation, you're sleeping in. Mm-hmm. So you're sleeping in. Or not. Or, or not. Yeah. yeah it Sometimes we have a lot of activities to do, right, so then that's you're true. not. <laughs> uh, but let's say you are a little mm-hmm. bit. That's pushing your normal awake response a little mm-hmm. bit later, right? Then what your body's mm-hmm. acclimatized to. Mm-hmm. You're probably staying up a little bit later too. Yeah. You know, so it's there's this really interesting, and I, and I track this. The reason I think it's so interesting, I track this on my aura ring. Yeah. I literally see that there's this whole shift. I go to bed later, wake up later. Yeah. And, you know, we can think in our head, oh, well, I still got my eight hours. Mm-hmm. But th- that's a whole hormonal change that your body has to adapt to. And, and I know it like, may not seem like a whole lot, but it's a big deal to your immune yeah. system. It's a big, our bodies like to be regulated, yeah. right? Yeah, and especially it's, knowing when like, melatonin is peaking between 9 and yeah. 11. And yeah. so if cortisol is going to impact our DHEA for the next day, yeah. if cortisol now all of a sudden has to rise again after 11 p.m. to keep us awake, yeah. it's going to impact just the rhythm of the DHEA the next day too and our vitality. Totally. Yeah. So I think, again, not to be super hyper vigilant to create more stress, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, when, when we're looking at these changes that our body goes through when we're away, uh, and then you imprint yourself back into normal life, like it might take a couple of days to readjust. And obviously mm-hmm. we haven't talked about time zone changes, which is sort of beyond the scope of this discussion. But, you know, the, the reality is that the routine, the food, the, the environment, the, the, the bedtime circadian rhythm, there's so many different changes that are going to lead to these adaptive responses, right? Yeah. And it's not uncommon we see people who are like uh, shift workers or students and things like that that have, they're constantly in that state where they're pushing their bedtime later they're, they're, the, they're the ones we always see low DHEA, mm-hmm. like EMTs, nurses, mm-hmm. like again, the shift work type people, they're DHEA categorically low. Mm-hmm. And then I see it with mm-hmm. students too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you know, if we're talking about this vacation piece and understanding, like we usually do notice a change in how we feel yeah. when our routine is a bit off. So like imagine doing things in your everyday that aren't in sync with your rhythm and just that becoming your normal, sometimes it's hard to see how much it's actually impacting us. Um, Because I will have patients that come in and say, well, I'm a night owl, that's when I get my best creativity or my work done, and that's what I need. But then when we look at their Dutch test, we can clearly see it's impacting so many different elements of their immune system, of their hormonal system, their relationships even, because now they just don't have that capacity to adapt anymore to Mm -hmm. the other stressors that show up during the day. So I think we just get so used to a certain rhythm, especially as a student, you get used to staying up late, waking up early, being on the go, you know, having that element of stress on your shoulders all the time that it's hard to sometimes shift out of that. And not even knowing how that's a possibility with just our society. Like I think everything is built around that. It's it's encouraged almost. Mm -hmm. So I don't, like, how do we shift that? Yeah, well, I think, again, the, the story is adaptation. Mm-hmm. We just have to keep finding ways to balance the equation to some degree. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't think that the impacts of our environment are ever going to be fully balanced by what we do, but they can be balanced enough that we're not, we're not getting chronically sick, we're not getting headaches all the time, we're not feeling you know, like we're stuck in pain or fatigue or you know et cetera, et cetera. again this is where knowing thyself knowing knowing your hormones mm-hmm. knowing what you're putting into your body knowing how that impacts you with blood work etc um i think that's so important mm-hmm. right so that you know when you go on vacation it's not this massive disruption you can actually enjoy it you're not worried about you know the recovery afterwards or even just what it's like once you're once you're right. you know once you're away so you don't need a vacation from your vacation right Although that, although that sometimes feels like it's the case, yeah. especially when you go visit my family and they'll say, yes, oh my goodness, yeah. we're exhausted when we get back. Mm-hmm. But it's like, it's like full on play, you know, for, for many days in a row. But, you know, um, so to sort of kind of cap this all off, you know, we talked about just the, the, there's a new season coming and, and our immune system is going to take a hit. Uh, just because you know things are changing with the, the weather and you know different circumstances so you know really we want to encourage you guys to think about what are those inside out support tools that you can be yeah. doing on a regular basis and not get too caught up in the outside in world because mm-hmm. it's easy to watch the news and go like oh no there's a new variant there's there's new like bacteria going around there's food poisoning everywhere <laughs> there's 
you know, you, you eat it's you eat out, you're going to get a parasite or something. I think it's so easy to really look outside of ourselves when really, you know, often we can start to put some pieces together. Why do I get sick? Oh, I was sleeping really poorly. I was eating way too much restaurant food, maybe a little alcohol at night more than I should have. Too much coffee in the morning. You know, I, I, we ha I haven't really given my body a chance to adapt. Yeah. And so I'm more likely to, to, to get sick, to get run down, right? Yeah, so it goes back to those simple habits, like taking inventory of your day and like really tracking how you feel. Okay, when I go to bed later, this is what ends up happening. Or when I'm eating this particular food, this is how I feel. This is what my digestion is doing. So the more you start to do that and the more you start to track, and like you said, know thyself, the easier it is to adapt when you do have to go into a new environment. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, well speaking of new environments, we want to welcome you into our Health Ignited Club where we dive into information like this and so much more. And then we have a round table discussion at the end to really figure out how we can apply these things into our daily life. So we'd love to invite you into that. It's at drsjensen.com and you can look up the Health Ignited Club there.